Prayers to Christ the King In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ Jesus, I acknowledge you, King of the universe. All that has been created has been made for you. Make full use of your rights over me. I renew the promises I made in baptism when I renounced Satan and all his pomps and works. And I promise to live a good Christian life and to do all in my power to procure the triumph of the rights of God in your church. Divine Heart of Jesus, I offer you my efforts in order to obtain that all hearts may acknowledge your sacred royalty and that thus the kingdom of your peace may be established throughout the universe. Amen. O Lord, our God, you alone are the most holy King and ruler of all nations. We pray to you, Lord, in the great expectation of receiving from you, O Divine King, mercy, peace, justice, and all good things. Protect, O Lord, our King, our families, and the land of our birth. Guard us, we pray, most faithful one. Protect us from our enemies and from your just judgment. Forgive us, O Sovereign King, our sins against you. Jesus, you are a King of mercy. We have deserved your just judgment. Have mercy on us, Lord, and forgive us. We trust in your great mercy. O most awe-inspiring King, we bow before you and pray. May your reign, your kingdom, be recognized on earth. Amen. Holy One, enthroned in glory over all creation, you are a shepherd to the lost and the least. Teach us to see your face among the poor, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, and visiting those who are sick or in prison, so that we may share in your eternal realm prepared from the foundation of the world, through Jesus Christ, who is coming indeed, to reign with justice, compassion, and love. Sovereign God, ruler of all creation, you sent Jesus to testify to the truth that you alone are the Lord of life. Help us to listen always to his voice so that we may proclaim his realm of justice, peace, and endless love through Christ who reigns forever. Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Savior, you pour out your power for the powerless and your salvation for the lost. Remember us in your new creation, so that we may live in peace with you in the presence of the Holy One, to whom be all honor and glory through you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Consecration to Christ the King Jesus Christ, King of the universe, King of our lives and of our families, we come to you to offer you all that we are and all that we have, our thoughts, our concerns, our qualities, our desires, and our weaknesses. We wish to put them at your service in order to collaborate with you in the salvation of mankind and the extension of your kingdom in the world. Receive with love the consecration of our lives that we make to you today. Accept it as our thanksgiving for all that we have received from your hands. Grant us the grace to follow the path of holiness by imitating your virtues and publicly showing your faith in you, so that all those around us will find in us authentic disciples of Christ, bearing the stamp of universal charity, consistency between faith and works, and a burning desire to see your kingdom established on earth. Place in our hearts the same zeal for the salvation of every single person that you had 
when you took flesh, and when you died on the cross. Grant that we faithfully may live your command of charity, which you left us as your legacy. Inflame our hearts, enlighten our minds, strengthen our resolve, and lead us always along the path of fidelity to your command. Transform us from all fear and selfishness. Strengthen our faith in the charism that you have entrusted to us, and grant us the courage to respond with absolute fidelity to your call. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer to Christ the King O Jesus Christ, I acknowledge you as Universal King. All that has been made has been created for you. Exercise all your rights over me. I renew my baptismal vows. Prayer to Christ the King O Jesus Christ, I acknowledge you as Universal King. All that has been made has been created for you. Exercise all your rights over me. I renew my baptismal vows. I renounce Satan, his pomps, and his works. I promise to live as a good Christian. And in particular, do I pledge myself to labor to the best of my ability for the triumph of the rights of God and of your church. Divine Heart of Jesus, to you do I offer my poor services, laboring that all hearts may acknowledge your sacred kingship, and that thus the reign of your peace be established throughout the whole universe. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. May this prayer to Christ the King help us all resist the snares of Satan as we strive to experience the true peace this coming Advent, the true peace that only our Lord can bring. As we all journey towards heaven, our eternal home, let us never forget that we are all God's children. We celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. Our victorious Christ was enthroned as King in heaven in all his glory. Pope Pius XI instituted this Feast of Christ the King in 1925. Pope Pius XI proclaimed Pax Christi in Regno Christi, the Peace of Christ in the reign of Christ. We live in the peace of Christ. We surrender our lives to Christ 
every day we accept Christ as our God, our Savior, and our King, we allow Christ, our King, to rule our lives. Christ has now conquered. Christ now rules. Viva Cristo Rey was the story of that little boy, Saint Jose Sanchez del Rio, when he was being persecuted, when he was being tortured. This Mexican little boy could only cry out, Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. Let's try to see this video of the boy who was martyred into sainthood, San Jose Luis Sanchez. Saint Jose Sanchez de Rio, when he was being tortured and before his execution, he was asked to denounce his faith in Christ. But he responded, Long live Christ the King. Viva Cristo Rey. Let's try to see this bit.
You say the words, and you can go home. I love you. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey, long live Christ the King. Connected with the story of the feast of Christ the King was the obelisk in Rome. Let's try to understand this obelisk in the Vatican. Rome has more obelisks than any other city in the world. There are 13 of these tall monuments that help make up the history of ancient Rome. One of the most well-known stands in the middle of St. Peter's Square, measuring 82 feet tall and weighing 320 tons. It's the only thing today that is still whole and healthy without having undergone restorations like the others you find in Rome. The height that it has today is half the size of the original. This obelisk was originally made in Egypt and transported to Rome in the year 37 AD by the Emperor Caligula. He then had it placed in the Circus of Nero. The Vatican obelisk remembers the martyrdom of many saints, but in particular, the martyrdom of St. Peter. In 1586, Pope Sixtus V decided to move it in front of St. Peter's Basilica. The move required the help of 900 men and 150 horses. Because it was a very delicate task, that required full concentration, there was an order of silence for the workforce. Anyone who spoke was sentenced to death. When the weight was the heaviest, the ropes began to give. Among the workers was Benedito Presca, a sailor who shouted, throw water on the ropes, and by which he broke the law by breaking the silence. The water was brought forward without a second thought, and the rope shrunk back to normal, and they immediately raised the obelisk. At the top of the obelisk, there was originally a bronze sphere, which according to medieval legend, contained the remains of Julius Caesar. However, Pope Alexander VII replaced it with a cross that sits above a star. Few people know that this obelisk is also a sundial. In 1817, several discs of marble were placed in the ground surrounding it to form the compass rose as well as the meridian line. We have this meridian line that on the one hand shows the hour of the day, which is indicated by the shadow of the obelisk according to the position of the sun, and secondly it indicates the winter and summer solstice. Around 2,000 years of history are tied to the Vatican's obelisk that now stands in the middle of St. Peter's Square and is one of the most visited places in the world. great obelisk bears the words of Christ the King. Christ Imperat. Christ reign. A great obelisk stands in the middle of St. Peter's Square in Rome. It was about 4,500 years old, brought to Rome by Canicola. It was set aright in the middle of the circus of Emperor Nero on the Vatican Hill. It was in that circus that St. Peter was martyred. On top of the obelisk, there now stands the cross. 
And in ancient time, there was a gold ball representing the sun. Now, there is the cross of Christ. On the pedestal of the obelisk, there are two inscriptions. You can see here, Christus Vincit, Christus Serenyat, Christus Imperat. The first of them in Latin, Christus Vincit, Christ has conquered. Christus Vincit, the second, Christus Serenyat, Christ now rules. The third, Christus Imperat. Christ now reigns supreme. Christus Vincit, Christus Regnat, Christus Imperat. The other inscription says, the Lion of Judah has conquered, as you see here. It was the language of victory. Christianity has triumphed by the power of the cross. Christianity has triumphed over the greatest power that the ancient world had known. Christianity has triumphed over the Roman Empire. In the middle of St. Peter's Square stands the obelisk. The obelisk bears those triumphant inscriptions. Let's go to the scriptures, the readings of the solemnity of Christ the King. First, the book of Daniel speaks of the mysterious Son of Man. Jesus would later identify himself with the Son of Man. The Son of Man comes on the clouds, glorified by God. The Son of Man was given dominion that will last forever. Our responsorial psalm on the solemnity of Christ the King is from Psalm 93. It proclaims, The Lord is King. Kayo ay hari, Panginoon, Nadadamitan ng karangalan, kapangyarihan, matatag ninyong itinayo ang mundo, kaya hindi ito mauga. Psalm 93 celebrates the God of Israel as King over all creation. The second reading, the book of Revelations, speak of the risen Christ, comes amidst the clouds. Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last of all things. In the Gospel, Jesus asserts before Pilate that he is a king. Jesus clarifies that his kingdom does not belong to this world. Jesus rules as king by serving rather than by dominating others. Jesus' authority is rooted in truth, not in physical force. Jesus' kingdom, the reign of God, is based on the Beatitudes. Jesus has come to bear witness to the truth, truth about God and His love for us. Jesus bears witness to the truth, truth about Himself and about Himself as the Son of God. Jesus has come to bear witness to the truth about us as the children of God. The church liturgical year concludes with this face of Christ the King. Let's try to understand more this solemnity of Christ. Solemnity of Christ the King On the last Sunday of its liturgical year, the Church celebrates the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ. King of the Universe, or Christ the King. Pope Pius XI instituted this feast in 1925 with his encyclical Quas Primas, or in the first, to respond to growing secularism and atheism. He recognized that attempting to trust Jesus Christ and His Holy Law out of public life would result in continuing discord among people and nations. This solemnity reminds us that while governments come and go, Christ reigns as King forever. 
Jesus Christ is very truth, and it is from Him that a truth must be obediently received by all mankind. Christ's kingship is rooted in the church's teaching on the Incarnation. Jesus is fully God and fully man. He is both the Divine Lord and the man who suffered and died on the cross. One person of the Trinity unites himself to human nature and reigns over all creation as the incarnate Son of God. Pope Pius hoped that the establishment of this feast would bring about the following. Number one, that this annual celebration would assist the faithful to gain strength in their true King, Jesus Christ. Number two, that leaders and nations would recognize that they are bound to submit and give respect to Christ the King. Number three, that nations would see that the church has the right to freedom and immunity from the estate. In these times when we are challenged in our faith and our ability to worship together, let us remember that Jesus Christ is our King who reigns forever. Number four, that individuals should honor and recognize Jesus as their sovereign king and emulate his total gift of self, perfectly embedded on the cross. In imitation of their thorn-crowned king, individuals can help bring love and relief to those who suffer and help to proclaim the good news of the reign of Christ in the world today. Jesus Christ, King of the Universe The Feast of Christ the King was instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925. The Feast of Christ the King was instituted to celebrate the Jubilee year in the 16th centenary of the Council of Nicaea. Pope Pius XI proclaimed Pax Christi in Regno Christi, the peace of Christ in the reign of Christ. The Feast of Christ the King reassert the sovereignty of Christ in the Church over all forms of government the Feast of Christ the King reminds Christians of the fidelity and loyalty they owe to Christ. Christ by his incarnation, Christ by his sacrificial death on the cross had made us adopted children of God. Christ has made us future citizens and heirs of the kingdom of heaven. The Feast of Christ the King reminds us that Jesus Christ is the only sovereign king. There is no other king but Christ. Not the totalitarian governments of dictators like Mussolini, Hitler, Stalin. In our modern times, dictator, they are not kings. We have only one king, our one sovereign king, Jesus Christ. Christ is our spiritual king and ruler who rules by truth and love. We declare our loyalty to Christ as our King by the quality of our Christian commitment. We express our loyalty to Christ by the serving of others, imitating Christ the King, our service with sacrificial and forgiving love. That way, we share in the kinship of Christ by our love and sacrifice. Honoring Christ the King, meaning to reign is to love. We express our service by our solidarity with the poor. Christ the King, 
became a slave and served the poorest of the poor. Emperors and kings with real ruling power exist today only in history books. Today, we honor Christ as the king of the universe. We honor Christ as the king of our hearts. We allow Christ to take control of our lives. Jesus still reigns as king in thousands and millions of human hearts all over the world. The cross is the throne of Christ Jesus. Ang trono ni Jesus bilang hari ay ang krus. The Sermon on, on the Mouth, the Beatitudes, is His rule of law. The law of Christ the King is the law of the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, the rule of love. Love God with all your being and love others as I have loved you. Christ's love is selfless. This is the love of Christ our King. A selfless love. Jesus in His selfless life. Selfless love that Christ the King had given us. Selfless love is the priority for every person that proclaims to be a follower of Christ our King. His love is compassionate. To reign is to love. To reign is to show compassion. And Jesus went around showing compassion to everyone. The love, the sacrifice that Jesus has shown all of us, His openness, His forgiveness, His non-violent attitude, love, compassion, is the rule of our King. His love is forgiving. To love is to forgive. To reign is to forgive. Forgiveness, Jesus has shown us of being what it means to be a king is to lower yourself and to die forgiving those who offended you. That's why Jesus Christ is a king with the saving, liberating mission. He has a mission which is to save us. And this is Jesus Jesus came as our Savior. Jesus saves. Jesus breaks the chains of sin. Jesus sets us free. Jesus frees us from all types of bondage. This is Christ the King. Jesus enables us to live peacefully and happily on earth. And this is the wish of Christ the King, that we may live in peace and happy on earth. And Christ the King promises us an inheritance in the eternal life of heaven. We said, Christus vincit, Christus reignat, Christus imperat. Yeah.
Pius XI wrote an encyclical on the Feast of Christ the King entitled Quas Primas. Pope Pius XI said, the chief causes of difficulties and evils in the world were due to men had trust Jesus Christ, men had trust the holy law of Jesus Christ out of their lives. They get, and Jesus came to set us free, and men have trust Jesus out of his life, even his holy law, and this is Christ. Difficulties and evils came into the world because Christ had no place either in private affairs. Christ had no place anymore in politics. As long as individuals and states refused to submit to the rule of our Savior, there would be no real, really hopeful prospect of a lasting peace among nations. Men must look for the peace of Christ in the kingdom of Christ. Kinakilang natin hanapin ang kaharian ni Kristo. Sa kaharian ni Kristo, hanapin natin ang kapayapaan ni Kristo na siya magdudulot sa atin. In the kingdom of Christ, peace could be more effectively restored. Sa kaharian ni Kristo, magkahari ang kapayapaan. Peace has a firmer basis through the restoration of the kingdom of our Lord. Pag ipabalik natin ang paggahari ng kaharian ng ating Panginoon, magkakaroon ng kapayapaan sa ating kapaligiran. There is hope of a brighter future in Christ. There is hope of a brighter future in the church. Holy year, the time when Pope Pius XI proclaimed a jubilee year, 1925, for the 1600th anniversary of the Council of Nicaea, Holy Year, had given great glory and honor to our Lord and King. The Feast of Christ the King was instituted in that Holy Year of 1925. Christ our Lord, Christ our King, is the founder of the Church And there must be the increasing zeal of the church for the spread of the kingdom of Christ. Christ's kingdom must spread to the most far distant regions of the world. Many nations must be won to the Catholic faith. We need the unremitting labor. We need the self-sacrifice of missionaries. Vastness of the regions have yet to be subjected to the sweet and saving yoke of Christ our King. First, we expate our sins. We promise loyalty to the rule of Christ. Two, rex glorie Christe. You, Christ, are the King of glory. You are the King of glory, O Christ. Generations of men and women dedicated themselves to Christ our King. Generations of men and women have subjected themselves to Christ to be faithful and subject to Christ in His earthly kingdom, called by Him to eternal bliss in the kingdom of heaven. The Nicene Creed, Creed of the Council of Nicaea, words were this: "Of His kingdom there shall be no end." Sa kanyang kaharian ay walang katapusan. Nicene Creed firmly affirm the kingly dignity of Christ. The sacred liturgy of a special feast of the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ later on was added. The annual feast of the kingship of Christ must be attended with much fruit. The feast of Christ the King must produce beneficial results in the future. It has the face has long been a common custom to give to Christ the metaphorical title of King. Christ is King because of the high degree of perfection whereby Christ excels all creatures. Christ reigns in the hearts of men. Christ reigns 
in the keenness of his intellect and the extent of his knowledge, Christ reigned in the intellect and knowledge of men. Christ reigns too in the wills of men. Si Kristo nagahari sa isip, sa karunungan, sa pagpapasya ng tao. In Christ, the human will was perfectly and entirely obedient to the holy will of God. Not our will, but to do the will of God. By His grace, by His inspiration, Christ subjects our free will. Christ incites us to the most noble in the abors. Christ is the King of hearts. By reason of His love, His charity for us. Christ's love exceeds all knowledge. Christ's mercy and kindness drew all men to Him. Man had been loved so much. Man had been loved so universally by Jesus Christ. The title and power of King belongs to Christ as man in the strict and proper sense too. As man, Christ received from the Father power and glory and kingdom. The Word of God was co-substantial with the Father. The Word of God is co-substantial with the Father has all things in common with Christ. Christ has everything in common with His Father. Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, one substance with the Father. That's why Christ has necessarily supreme and has absolute supreme dominion over all things created. This is Christ who has supreme power, dominion, absolute supreme dominion over all things created. Let's try to see this chant, the Gregorian chant of Christ the
Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. The apocalyptic book of Daniel came to prominence during a bitter persecution of the Jews in the second century before Christ. The book of Daniel bolstered the faith of the beleaguered chosen people of God. The book of Daniel rises from the sixth century before Christ during the captivity of the Jews in Babylon, their exile in Babylon. Prophet Daniel expresses well the Jewish understanding of the kinship of God. Prophet Daniel speaks of the kinship of the promised Messiah. He describes the mysterious Son of Man with whom Jesus would later identify himself. The Son of Man was coming on the clouds glorified by God. The Son of Man was given the dominion that will last forever. In his vision, Prophet Daniel saw God seated on a throne with millions of people serving him. Into his presence, there came a human figure, one like a son of man. He was given dominion and glory and kinship that all should serve him. His kinship is one will, which shall never be destroyed. He would be the king of kings and the lord of glory. His kingdom would last forever. Ito po'y nasusulat sa hula ni Propeta Daniel. Patuloy ang aking pagitain. Nakita ko sa alapaap sa langit ang parang isang tao. Lumapit siya sa nabubuhay magpakailan pa man. Binigyan siya ng kapamahalaan, ang karangalan, ang kaharian upang paglingkuran siya ng lahat ng tao sa bawat bansa at wika. Ang pamamahala niya ay hindi magwawakas. Ang kanyang kaharian hindi mawawasak. The New Testament proves that Jesus is this long-awaited King of the Jews. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. The New Testament book of Revelation has the same apocalyptic character as that of the book of Prophet Daniel. During that time when the book of Revelations was written, the people had difficult times. They were persecuted. The book of Revelation wanted to bolster the faith of the people. To the description of Jesus given here in the book of Revelations, we can apply what was said above about the Son of Man in his commission for the ancient one. The book of Revelations explains how the risen Christ will come amid the clouds. Ito yung pahayag, aklat ng pahayag. Sumain niyong pagpapala, ang kapayapaan mula kay Jesus Cristo ang tapat na saksi. Si Jesus Cristo ang unang nabuhay sa mga patay at hari ng mga hari sa lupa. Inibig niya tayo at sa kanyang pagkamatay ay pinalaya niya tayo mula sa ating kasalanan. Ginawa niya tayong isang liping maharlika upang maglingkod sa Diyos at sa kanyang ama bilang saserdote. Keso Kristo ang kapurian. Keso Kristo ang karangalan. Keso Kristo ang kapangyarihan magpakailan paman. Darating siya nasa alapaap. Makikita ng lahat, pati ng mga umuno sa kanyang tagiliran. Wika ni Jesus, wika ng Panginoon Diyos. Ako ang Alpha at ang Omega. Ako ang simula at ang wakas. Ako ang Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Diyos sa kasalukuyan. Diyos sa nakaraan. At Diyos na siyang darating. Alpha and the Omega. Christ will come as the Alpha and the Omega. Christ is the first and the last of all things. In this apocalyptic style, the book of the Revelations describes how Jesus has become our King. Jesus, our King, freed us from our sins by His blood. Jesus, our King, freed us from the ruler of darkness. Jesus blessed all of us to be priests for His God and for His Father. Jesus blessed us. Jesus blessed us all because He loves us. Christ, the King, is the Alpha and the Omega. Christ 
is the beginning and the end. Si Kristo ang simula at ang hangganan. The A and the Z, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of our lives and of all our life. That is Christ. The beginning and the end of our lives and the beginning and the end of all life. Alpha and the Omega. Alpha and the Omega are the first and last letters of the alphabet in Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek. Greek is the original language of the book of Revelation, giving Jesus the Alpha, meaning the title, the beginning, reminds us of the first theme of the Gospel of St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That Jesus is the Word of God, pre-existing with the Father before all creation. Now, giving Christ the title Omega, meaning Christ the end, is to say that Christ will be in charge at the end of the world. The four passages we have referred today, the first reading, book of Daniel, the, the responsorial Psalm, Psalm 93, book of Revelation, the gospel, these four passages refer to the supreme kingship of Christ. Hail, Redeemer, King Divine. Let's join this theme.
Christ founded a kingdom for us. Christ has made us priests dedicated to the service of God, His Father. Christ will come a second time to judge all men. Various scriptural texts proves the kinship of Christ in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the Old Testament text, the title Christ the King has its roots in secret, sacred scriptures. The title Christ the King has its roots in the whole theology of the kingdom of God. In most of the messianic prophecies given in the Old Testament books, such as the books of Samuel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, all of these books spoke about prophecies of the coming of the Messiah. Christ the Messiah is presented as King. We read throughout the scriptures that Christ is the King, meaning the Messiah to come will be a King. The Savior to come will be a King. The doctrine of the kingship of Christ is found in the Old Testament. The Messiah, for example, looking to the book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 19, it says, The Messiah, the Savior, is he that shall come out of Jacob to rule, to reign, meaning he is a king. The Messiah has been set by the Father as king over Zion, his holy mountain. The Messiah shall help the Gentiles for his inheritance. Psalm number 2 tells us the Messiah shall help the outmost parts of the earth for his possession. In the nuptial hymn, the wedding rite, the future king of Israel is hailed as the most rich and powerful monarch. This is a quotation from the book of Psalms. Chapter 45, verse 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Thy scepter of thy kingdom is a scepter of righteousness. Ang iyong luklukan, O Diyos, ay magpakailan paman. Setro na kaganapan, ang setro ng iyong kaharian. Christ's kingdom will have no limits. Mag Pakailan pa man ang paghahari ni Kristo. Christ's kingdom shall be enriched with justice and peace. Ang kanyang kaharian ay sagana sa ustisyo, katarungan at kapayapaan. This is a quotation from the book of Psalms, chapter 71, verse 7 to 8. In his days shall justice spring up in abundance of peace, and he shall rule from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Ang, ang, at ang buhay na matuwid sa kanyang kapanahunan, maghari sa bansa, sa basa niya at umunlad kailan paman, nawa kanyang kaharian ay lubusan niyang lumawak mula sa ilog sa daigdig ay kakalat ang kanyang kaharian. The prophets testified on the coming of the Messiah as King, Christ the Messiah. Prophet Isaiah said, For a child is born to us, and a son is given to us, and the government is upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, God the Almighty, the Father of the world to come, the Prince of Peace. His kingdom shall be multiplied, and there shall be no end of peace. He shall sit upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it and strengthen it with judgment and with justice from henceforth forever. The prophet Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 to 7. Sapagkat isinilang isang sanggol na lalaki para sa atin, ibinigay sa kanyang pamamahala, siya ay tatawaging kahangangan tagapayo, makapangyarihan Diyos, walang hanggang ama, prinsipe ng kapayapaan, magiging malawak ang kanyang kapangyarihan, walang katapusang kapayapaan, ipagkakalob sa trono ni David at sa kanyang kaharian. Itatatag niya ito at pamamahalaan 
na may katarungan at katwiran mula ngayon, magpakailan pa man. Prophet Isaiah and the other prophets are in agreement. Prophet Jeremiah foretells that just seed that shall rest from the house of David and binhi na magagaling sa kaharian ni David, the son of David, that shall reign as king, ang anak ni David, na magkahari bilang isang hari and shall be wise, shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. That is the prophecy of Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Narito, ang mga araw na dumarating, sabi ng Panginoon, na ako'y magbabangon kay David ng matuwid na sanga. Siya'y magkahari na gaya ng hari gagawang at gagawang may kapantasan at magsasagawa ng kahatulan kaganapan sa lupain. Prophet Daniel announces the kingdom that the God of heaven shall be found that shall never be destroyed and shall stand forever. Patuloy ang aking pangitain. Nakita ko sa alapaap sa langit ang parang isang tao lumapit siya sa nabubuhay magpakailan paman. Binigyan siya ng kapamahalaan, ng karangalan, ng kaharian upang paglingkuran siya ng lahat ng tao sa bawat bansa at wika. Ang pamamahala niya ay hindi magwawakas. Ang kanyang kaharian ay hindi mawawasak. Behold, one like a son of man was coming. A prophecy from the book of Daniel chapter 7. Prophet Daniel says, I beheld therefore in the vision of the night and no as one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and he came even to the ancient of days and they presented him before him and he gave him power and glory and a kingdom and all peoples and tribes and tongues shall serve him his power is an everlasting power that shall not be taken away in his kingdom shall not be destroyed prophecy from Prophet Daniel, chapter 2, verse 44. At sa mga kaarawan ng mga haring yaon ay maglalagay ang Diyos sa langit na isang kaharian na hindi magigiba kailanman o ang kapangyarihan man niya o'y iiwan sa ibang bayan kung hindi pagpuputol-putulin at lilipulipunin niya ang lahat ng kahariang ito at siya o'y lalagi at siya o'y lalagi, magpakailan pa man. The God of heavens will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. The prophecy of Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Zachariah had a prophecy concerning the merciful king riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the fall of an ass entering Jerusalem as the just and Savior amid acclamation of the multitudes. The book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Pagkat dumarating na ang iyong hari na magtatagumpay at mapagwagi, dumarating siyang may kakapakumbabaan, batang asno, ang kanyang sinasakyan. To understand better, let's try to see this Catholic kids media Christ the King. Today is the Feast of Christ the King. Everything that we've read each Sunday leads to this, that Jesus is the King of everything. The thing is, our King never led a country or soldiers. He died on a cross like a criminal. So why do we call Jesus the King? 
The second reading from Paul to the Colossians explains why. Paul writes, He is the image of the invisible God. This means that God is with us when we are with Jesus. Paul also writes that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, and all things were created through him and for him. He is the creator, the order in the world, and the one who continues to hold it together. The universe was created for him. So Jesus isn't just a religious teacher or prophet or symbol. Jesus is God. Paul writes, For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell. Jesus has the fullness of God because Jesus is God. But in the gospel we hear that our king was crucified, which is an off way to die. His friends are gone, and people make fun of him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Why would Jesus, our king, let this happen? People keep telling him to save himself, but he doesn't. He doesn't use his power to protect himself like a king on earth would. He loves and protects us over himself, and this is what makes him a true king. The power that holds the world together is the power of true love, of sacrificial love. When we show this kind of love to others, we become connected to what is most true, good, and powerful. We draw closer to God himself. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. You can also support this channel on Patreon and online membership platform using... Behold your king. Let's try to go to the New Testament text on the king, the kingship of the Messiah. The gospel is in Jesus, the biblical basis of the feast of Christ the King. The four evangelists recognize this prophecy of Christ as our King, as fulfilled. The Messiah, the King, prophecy fulfilled. Jesus is called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The same doctrine of the kingship of Christ is found in the New Testament. Christ's kingship is even more clearly thought and confirmed in the New Testament. Let's try to go to the Annunciation event. The Annunciation, in the Annunciation recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 13, verse 2 to 33, we read, The archangel announced to the virgin that she should bear a son and says that the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David, his father, and he shall reign in the house of Jacob forever, and he shall reign on the house of Jacob forever unto the throne of David, his father, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Luke chapter 1, verse 32. Siya ay magiging dakila at tatawaging anak ng kataas-taasan at sa kanya ibibigay ng Panginoon Diyos ang luklukan ni David na kanyang ama. And his kingdom will have no end. The kingdom of God is the center of Jesus' teaching. Ang kaharian ng Diyos, ang sentro ng pangangaral ni Jesus. The praise kingdom of God occurs in the gospel 122 times. Yung praseng kaharian ng Diyos matatagpuan sa Ibanghelyo, isang daan, dalawampu't dalawang beses. Jesus used the praise kingdom of God in 90 instances. Jesus mismo, ginamit niya yung prase, yung kaharian ng Diyos, siyam na put beses na pinanggit ni Jesus. Let's go again to the another gospel passage which mention Christ as the King, the Magi from the East. The Magi from the Far East came to Jerusalem and asked the question, Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, Where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews? They asked, We saw his star and we have come to worship him. Nasaan na roon? Saan na roon? Ang ipinanganak na hari ng mga Hudyo sapagat aming nakita ang kanyang bituin sa silanganan at naparito kami upang siya'y sambahin. Again, the gospel passage of Palm Sunday proclaims Christ as the King. Palm Sunday. On Palm Sunday, the Jews royally received Jesus and shouted the gospel of St. Luke chapter 19, verse 38. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. 
God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Pinagpala ang haring dumarating sa pangalan ng Panginoon. Kapayapaan sa langit. Papuri sa kataas-taasan. The word Christ as king was also mentioned during the trial of Jesus. Christ spoke himself as king in his reply to the Roman magistrate, to Pontius Pilate, who asked him publicly whether he were a king or not. During the trial of Jesus described in the gospel, Pontius Pilate asked the question, John 18 verse 33, Are you the king of the Jews? Ikaw ba ay hari ng mga Hudyo? Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked Jesus. And Jesus replied, You say that I am a king. Ikaw na nagsasabing, Ako ay hari. At ang kaharian ko'y hindi sa sanibutang ito. I was born and came into the world for this one purpose, to bear witness to the truth. Itong daylan, kung bakit ako ipinanganak at naparito sa sanibutan upang magpatutuo tungkol sa katotohanan. Again, the word king, referring to Christ as king, was mentioned in the praise in Re. Where when Jesus was crucified, there was this inscription wood written, in Re. In Latin, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Judeiro, meaning Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews, the signboard in Re, hung over Jesus' head on the cross, read, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews, John 19, verse 19. Jesus na taga Nazareth, ang hari ng mga Hudyo. The word kingship, the reign of Christ, was also mentioned in the ascension of Christ. Before his ascension into heaven, Jesus declares, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Christ spoke himself as a king after his resurrection when giving to his apostles the mission of teaching, baptizing all nations, Christ took the opportunity to call himself king. Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 40. The Son of Man shall come in great glory. Matthew 35, verse 31. Christ confirmed the title king publicly. John 18, verse 18. Christ solemnly proclaimed that all power was given him in heaven and on the earth. Matthew 28, verse 18. At lumapit si Jesus sa kanila at sila'y kanyang kinausap at sinabi, ang lahat ng kapamahalaan sa langit at sa ibabaw ng lupa ay naibigay na sa akin. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. These words, can only be taken to indicate the greatness of the power of Christ, the infinite extent of the kingdom of Christ. Again, kingship of Christ was referred to in the gospel passage on the last judgment. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, we read that Christ the King will come in glory to judge us on the day of the last judgment when the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, and shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. Matthew 25, verse 31. Christ Himself speaks of His own kingly authority. Christ speaks of His kingly authority in His last discourse. Christ spoke of the rewards and punishment that will be the eternal lot of the just and the condemned, condemn the damned ones. Jesus clarified this kinship before Pontius Pilate during his trial. The Jews accused Jesus of blasphemy for claiming to be God. The Jews wanted Jesus to die by the most shameful and painful death, namely the Roman execution. The Jews brought Jesus before Pilate, the Roman governor, they accused Jesus of causing sedition against the Roman Empire in Caesar. We found this man 
inciting our people to revolt, opposing payment to the tribute to Caesar, and claiming to be Christ a king. Luke chapter 23, verse 2. At nangangapasimula silang isumbong si Jesus na sinasabing, nasumpungan namin ang taong ito na pinapasama ang aming bansa at ipinagbabawal na bumuwis kay Caesar. At sinasabi na siya rin nga ang Kristo ang hari and they began to accuse him saying, we found this fellow preventing the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar saying he himself is Christ a king. Pontius Pilate conducted the trial and questioned Jesus about his kinship in his dialogue with Pilate. Jesus implies that Pilate does not understand the spiritual or transcendent nature of Jesus' kinship. My kingdom does not belong in this world. Jesus admits that he is a king. Jesus declares that his kingdom is not of this world. Jesus' present nor his future reign does not operate according to the world's criteria of power and dominance. Jesus' kingdom, the reign of God, is based on the Beatitudes, ang pagahari ng Diyos. Jesus rules through loving service rather than through dominion, ang pagahari ni Jesus ay pagmamahal at paglilingkod. Jesus' authority is rooted in truth and not in physical force. Ang pagahari ni Kristo ay nakaugat sa katotohanan. And Jesus bears witness to the truth about a larger an eternal kingdom, Jesus has come to bear witness to the truth, bear witness about God in His love, bear witness about us. Jesus bore witness about whom we are called to be. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 5, St. John calls Christ the Prince of the Kings of the earth. Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth. Book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. St. John the Apostle had the vision of the future as he who had on his garment, on his tie written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. And he had on his vesture, on his tie, a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. In Christ, whom the Father had appointed heir of all things, the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 2, ang kanyang anak na siyang itinalaga na tagapamana ng lahat ng mga bagay na sa pamamagitan naman niya ay ginawa ang sanlibutan for he must reign until the end of the world. He had put all enemies, all his enemies under the feet of God and the Father. Confer the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The first letter to the Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25. Sapagkat, kinakailangan siya ay maghari hanggang mailagay niya sa ilalim ng kanyang mga talampakan ang lahat niyang mga kaaway. In view of the common teaching of the sacred scriptures, the sacred books, the Old Testament, the New Testament, on the kinship of the Messiah, the Catholic Church, which is the kingdom of Christ on earth, salute her author and founder in her annual liturgy as King and Lord, as King of Kings. I invite you to join this short novena to Christ the King. Novena to Christ the King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, you break the power of evil and make all things new in your Son, Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. May all in heaven and earth acclaim your glory 
and never cease to praise you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this this day day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now, and and ever ever shall be, world world without without end. end. Amen. O Lord our God, you alone are the most holy King and ruler of all nations. We pray to you, Lord, in the great expectation of receiving from you, O divine King, mercy, peace, justice, and all good things. Protect, O Lord our King, our families, and the land of our birth. Guard us, we pray, most faithful one. Protect us from our enemies and from your just judgment. Forgive us, O sovereign King, our sins against you. Jesus, you are a King of mercy. We have deserved your just judgment. Have mercy on us, Lord, and forgive us. We trust in your great mercy. O most all-inspiring King, we bow before you and pray. May your reign, your kingdom, be recognized on earth. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The church used these titles, Lord or King, in the ancient Psalmody. The church used these titles in the sacramentaries. The church used these titles daily, now in the prayers publicly offered to God. The church used them in offering the immaculate victims. There is the perfect harmony of the Eastern liturgies with our own liturgy in this continual praise of Christ the King. There is truth of the sayings, Legem Credenti, Lex statuit supplicandi, the rule of faith, is indicated by the law of our worship. St. Cyril of Alexandria indicated the foundation of this power and dignity of our Lord as King. Christ, St. Cyril of Alexandria says, has dominion over all creatures. Christ has a dominion not seized by violence or usurp. St. Cyril Alexandra said, Alexandria said, Christ's dominion is by essence and by nature. Christ's kinship is founded upon the ineffable hypostatic union. From this, it follows not only that Christ is to be adored by angels and by men, to Christ as man, angels and men are subject. Angels and men must recognize the kinship of Christ by reason of the hypostatic union. Christ has power over all creatures. Christ is our king by acquired as well as by the natural right for he is our redeemer. You were not redeemed with corruptible things, but you you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, unspotted and undefiled. The first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. The first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 20 says, We are no longer our own property, for Christ has purchased us with a great price. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 15, Our very bodies are the members of Christ. What is the nature and meaning 
of this Lordship of Christ. There is a threefold power essential to Lordship. Scriptures testified of the universal dominion of our Redeemer. Jesus Christ was given to man, not only as our Redeemer. Jesus Christ was given also as a law giver to whom obedience is due. That is the Tridentine Council session, it says. The gospel tell us Jesus made laws. The gospel present Jesus to us in the act of making the laws. Those who keep the laws show their love for the divine master. Yung pinapanatili, yung isinasabuhay ang mga batas ni Kristo ang siyang nagpapayag ng tunay na pagpapayag sa Kanya. And Jesus promises that they shall remain in His love. Ang wika lang ni Jesus na Kanyang mga tagasunod manatili sa Kanyang batas ng pag-ibig, pag-ibig, love. Jesus claimed judicial power as received from His Father. When the Jews accused Him of breaking the Sabbath by the miraculous cure of a sick man, it is there that Jesus claimed the judicial power that He received from His Father. For neither doth the Father judge any man, but hath given all judgment to the Son. The Gospel of St. John chapter 5 verse 22. In this power is included the right of rewarding and punishing all men living. For this right is inseparable from that of judging. Jesus also receives executive power. Executive power too belongs to Christ. For all must obey His commands. None may escape the commands nor the sanction that Christ has imposed. Wala makatatakas sa utos at batas ni Kristo na siya nagkahari sa atin at lahat tayo inanyayan na tumalima sa kanyang kautusan bilang ating hari. The kingdom of God is spiritual. The kingdom of God is concerned with the spiritual things. That this is so the about quotation from scripture amply proof that this is so above the scripture quotation from scripture amply proof. Christ by his own action confirmed it. The Jews, even the apostles, wrongly opposed that the Messiah would restore the liberties and kingdoms of Israel. And Jesus repelled and denied such a suggestion. When the people thrown around him in admiration and would acclaim him as king, Jesus shrank from the honor and sought safely in flight. Ayaw ni Jesus yung pagkahari na niluluk-luk siya bilang isang makapangyariang hari. Ang ibig ni Jesus ay paglilingkod. And this is Jesus. Before the Roman magistrate Pontius Pilate, Jesus declared that his kingdom was not of this world. Ang kanyang kaharian na hindi sa makalupang mundong ito. The gospel present this kingdom as one which men prefer to enter by penance. If you want to follow Jesus, then carry your cross, deny yourself, and follow Jesus. Enter the way of the cross, the way of penance. Men cannot actually enter the kingdom of God except by faith and by baptism. Kinakailangan para ng palataya at ikaw ay magpabinyag, mapabilang bilang kasunod ni Kristo, tagasunod ni Kristo upang mapasakanyang kaharian. Though an eternal right, external right, signifies and produces an interior degeneration, yung pagbibinyag, pagbaba ng Espiritu Santo, tayo nagiging anak ng Diyos, tayo nagiging tagasunod ni Kristo. Kinakailangan natin upang mapabilang sa kanyang paghahari. This kingdom of Christ is opposed to that of Satan and to the power of darkness. Ang kaharian ni Kristo ay salungat sa kaharian ni Satanas at sa kapangiri ng kadiliman 
ang kaharian ni Kristo ay kaharian ng kaliwanagan. Jesus' kingdom, the bonds of His subject, ay spirit of detachment from riches. Jesus' kingdom demands detachment from earthly things in a spirit of gentleness. Ang iniingi sa atin, hindi yung pagsas, pagpapasasa sa material na bagay sa mundong ito, ang iniingi sa atin ay ang espiritu ng kahinyunan. Mahinahon, pagmamahal, they must hunger and thirst after justice. To follow Jesus in His kingdom, dapat ay isang tao'y nauuhaw at nagugutom sa kabanalan, sa katarungan, sa tamang landas. They must deny themselves and carry the cross. Ibig mo makabilang sa karyaan ni Jesus, dapat tanda mo, talikda na iyong sarili. Pasanin mo ang iyong cross at sumunod ka kay Kristo na siyang hari na ating buhay. Christ, our Redeemer, purchased the church at the price of His own blood. Tagapagligtas tayo at binayarin niya ang ating pagkakasala sa pagdanak ng kanyang sariling dugo. This is Christ. As a priest, He offered Himself bilang isang pare. Inalay niya kanyang sarili bilang isang sakripisyong buhay. Papatawad na ating kasalanan. Jesus continues to offer Himself as a victim for our sins. At patuloy na inaalay ni Jesus sa kanyang sarili bilang karapat dapat na alay sa kapagpapatawad ng ating kasalanan. His kingly dignity partakes in a manner of both these offices. Christ has authority in civil affairs. By virtue of the absolute empire over all creatures committed to Him by the Father, all things are in the power of Christ. During His life on earth, He refrained from exercise of such authority. Hindi na nga Jesus ang kapangyarihan ng mundong ito. Jesus disdained Himself to possess or to care for earthly goods. Si Jesus hindi naging sasabihin natin na hinangad niya ang material na bagay sa mundong ito. Jesus did not or the sea today interfere with those who possess them. Non iripit mortalia quirenyat dat celestia. The kingdom of our Redeemer embraces all men. Ang kaharian ng tagapagligtas. Yakap, yakap ang buong sangkatauhan. Let's try to understand this face of Christ the King. says, His kingdom, His empire includes not only Catholic nations, His kingdom includes not only baptized persons who, though of right belonging to the church, have been led astray by error or have been cut off from her by schism, but His kingdom also includes those who are outside the Christian faith so that truly the whole of mankind is subject to the power of Jesus Christ. From the encyclical of Pope Leo XIII, 1899, all individual and the family or the state are under the dominion of Christ. Everyone, individuals, families, state, government are all under the 
the reign of Christ our King. All men, whether collectively, all men, whether individually, are under the dominion of Christ. In Christ's kingship, in the kingdom of Christ, is the salvation of the individual. Ang kaligtasan ng bawat nila lang ay nasa kaharian ni Kristo. In Christ is the salvation of society. Ang kaligtasan ng sangkalupaan, lipunan, ay matatagpuan kay Kristo. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. Christ is the author of happiness and true prosperity for every man and for every nation. For a nation is happy when its citizens are happy. Ang bansa ay masaya kung ang kasapi sa lipunan ay masaya. St. Augustine says, What else is a nation but a number of men living in concord? If the rulers of the nations wish to preserve their authority, to promote and increase the prosperity of their countries, they will not neglect the public duty of reverence and obedience to the rule of Christ. Sinasabi ang namamahala, ang namumuno na bawat bansa, kung ibig nilang ipakit ang kanilang pamamahala, ipahayag nila, dapat sila rin ang nagbibigay pugay at pagtalima sa batas at pagkahari ni Kristo. With God and with Jesus Christ cannot be excluded from political life. These are the very words of Pope Leo the 13, with God and Jesus Christ cannot be excluded from political life. Meaning, politics must accept God and Jesus Christ. Authority is derived from God. Authority is not derived from man. Human society is tottering to its fall. This is Pope Leo the 13th. Human society has no longer a secure and solid foundation as written by Pope Leo the 13th in Encyclical Ubi Arcano. When men recognize both in pub, private and public life that Christ is King, society will, uh, will at last receive the great blessings of real liberty. Kung ang sangkatauhan sa kanilang buhay ay tatanggapin si Kristo bilang hari, ang lipunan ay makakatanggap ng napakalaking pagpapala ng tunay na kalayaan, kapayapaan. When men recognize that Christ is King, society will have a well-ordered discipline, peace and harmony. Kung ang sangkatauhan ay tatanggapin lamang si Kristo bilang hari, sa ating lipunan, ay magkakaroon ng disiplina, kapayapaan, pagkakaisa, pagbubuklod-bukluran kung si Kristo ay tatagapin sa ating piling, sa ating lipunan. Our Lord's kingly office invests the human authority of princes and rulers with a religious significance. Our Lord's kingly office enables the citizens' duty of obedience Men redeemed by Christ should serve their fellow men. Tayo na iniligtas ni Kristo ay may pananagutan paglingkuran ang ating kapwa tao. St. Paul says in his first letter to the Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23, You are both with the price. Be not made bonds slaves of men. If princes and magistrates duly elected are filled with the procession persuasions that they rule but by the mandate in the place of the divine king they will exercise their authority piously and wisely they will make laws and administer them having in view the common good and also the human dignity of their subjects ang sinasabi rito kung ang namamahala lamang ang namamahala sa iba't ibang bansa yung tagagawa yung mangbabatas ay 
tatanggapin lamang si Kristo bilang hari, sila ay may katungkulan na gawin ang kanilang pananagutan na gagawa sila ng batas para sa kabubuti ng lahat, para sa kapakanan ng bawat dignidad, ng bawat kasapi sa lipunan. If only our lawmakers will accept the kinship of Christ, the result will be a stable peace and tranquility. Kung tatagpin lamang natin ang paghahari ng Diyos, magkakaroon ng kapayapaan sa ating bansa. Yan po ay mga salita ni Pope Leo the Thirteenth. Men will see in their king or in their rulers, men like themselves, they see reflected in them the authority of Christ, God, and man. Kung tatagapin lamang natin si Kristo at makikita natin si Kristo bilang hari na ating buhay, ang mga namumuno tulad ng mga namumuno, tatanggapin nila si Kristo at makikita nila sa kanilang pamumuno ang pamamahana ni Kristo na Diyos at taong totoo. Kung ang namumuno, tatanggapin si Kristo, magkakaroon ng kapayapaan at pagkakaisa. Peace and harmony will come if we accept Christ as our King. There will be the spread and universal extent of the kingdom of Christ. Ang pagkahari ni Kristo ay mapapalaganap kung tatanggapin lamang ng bawat bansa, ng bawat lipunan, ng bawat pamayanan si Kristo bilang hari, men will become more and more conscious of the link that binds them together. Kung tatanggapin lamang natin si Kristo sa ating buhay, tayo mismo makikita natin ang panawagan sa ating lahat na mabuklod-buklod bilang isang pamayanan kay Kristo. If men will accept Christ as their king, many conflicts will be either prevented entirely. Kung tatakapin lamang natin ang paghahari ni Kristo, di wala ng gulo, wala ng hidwaan, wala ng gera, wala ng di pagkakaunawaan. At least, bitterness will be diminished. Mawawala na yung mga sama ng loob kung ang bawat isa ay tatanggapin ang paghahari ni Kristo. If all nations receive the kingdom of Christ as it should, the King of Peace will bring peace on earth. Kung ang lahat ng bansa lamang ay tatanggapin ang paghahari ni Kristo, ang hari ng kapayapaan ay magdudulot ng kapayapaan sa buong daigdig. Christ came to reconcile all things. Tumating si Jesus upang pag-isahin tayo, ipagkasundo ang lahat ng bagay. Christ came not to be served, but to serve. Si Kristo ay naparito, hindi upang paglingkuran, bagkus upang maglingkod. The Lord of all gave Himself to us as a model of humanity. Ang Panginoon ay dumating bilang modelo ng kababaang loob. Christ gave us His principle law of love and precept of charity. Si Kristo dumating para ibigay sa atin ang batas ng pag-ibig at batas ng pagmamahalan. Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, my yoke is sweet, my burden is light. Oh, what happiness would be would be ours if all men, individuals, families, and nations would be but let themselves be governed with Christ. Anong kasiyahan, kagalakan mapapasa atin kung ang bawat nila lang bawat pamilya, bawat pansa ay tatanggapin nila ang paghahari ni Kristo sa kanilang buhay. Pope Leo XIII said, Then at length will many evils be cured. Then will the law regain its former authority. Kung tatanggapin lamang natin ang paghahari ni Kristo, lahat na mga kasamaan sa mundo ay mapapaway at ang batas ni Kristo ang siya magahari sa atin. Magkakaroon ng kapayapaan, pagpapala ay muling babalik sa ating bayan. When we accept Christ, then peace with all its blessings be restored. 
the very words of Pope Leo the 13th. When all freely acknowledge and obey the authority of Christ, men will sheath their swords and lay down their arms and every tongue confesses that the Lord Jesus Christ is in the glory of God the Father. Kung ang lahat lamang ay tatanggapin at tatalima sa paghahari ni Kristo, wala nang higbaan, wala nang gera. Lahat ng mga ating kagamitan na armas sa pagpapatayan, ilalagay natin, iisang tabi natin, at ang lahat ng bansa ipapahayag na si Kristo ang ating Panginoon sa kalulatian ng Diyos Ama. That these blessings may be abundant and lasting in Christian society, it is necessary that the kingship of our Savior should be recognized and understood. Kung ibig natin ang pagpapala at walang hanggang pagpapala, grasya ng Diyos, mapasa ating lipunan, kinakailangan natin tagapin ang paghahari ni Kristo bilang ating tagapagligtas. To this end, that's why a special feast in honor of the kingship of Christ was instituted. Itong dahilan, bakit ang kapistahan ni Kristong Hari ay itinalaga sa atin. People are instructed in the truths of faith na mga tao maturuan sa katotohanan ng panampalataya that people are brought to appreciate the inner joys of the religion na mga tao lalo nilang mapahalagahan ang kagalakan na pagsasabuhay ng kanilang pananampalataya. And that's why we have the annual celebration of the Feast of Christ the King. Now I invite you to join this Novena to Christ the King. Novena to Christ the King, Day 1 to Day 9. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ, our Savior and our King, renew in me allegiance to your kingship. I pray for the grace to place you above the powers of this world in all things. I pray for the grace to obey you before any civic authority. I pray for the grace to fervently bring about your kingdom in my family and community. I pray that you will reign in my mind. I pray that you will reign in my heart. I pray that you will reign in my will. I pray that you will reign in my body. I pray that you will reign throughout all the world. O Christ the King, may your reign be complete in my life and in the life of the world. Christ, my King, please answer these petitions, if they be in accordance with your holy will. Mention your intentions. As I reflect on your second glorious coming and the judgment of all mankind, I beg you to show me mercy and give me the grace to become a great saint. I pray that not only will I spend eternity with you, but that you may use me, a sinner, to bring others into your kingdom for your glory. Christ the King, your kingdom come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prayer to Christ the King. O Lord our God, you alone are the most holy King and ruler of all nations. We pray to you, Lord, in the great expectation of receiving from you, 
O Divine King, mercy, peace, justice and all good things. Protect, O Lord our King, our families and the land of our birth. Guard us, we pray most faithful one. Protect us from our enemies and from your just judgment. Forgive us, O Sovereign King, our sins against you. Jesus, you are a King of mercy. We have deserved your just judgment. Have mercy on us, Lord, and forgive us. We trust in your great mercy. O most awe-inspiring King. We bow before you and pray. May your reign, your kingdom, be recognized on earth. Amen. Christ the King. Have mercy on us. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ the King. Reign in me today and every day. Amen. What is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of Christ the King? Gerald Daring explained from St. Louis University Center for Liturgy. The kingdom of God is a space. The kingdom of God exists in every home. The kingdom of God is where parents and children love one another. The kingdom of God exists in every country that cares for its weak and vulnerable. The kingdom of God exists in every parish that reaches out to the needy. The kingdom of God is a time. The kingdom of God happens everywhere whenever someone feeds a hungry person. The kingdom of God happens whenever someone shelters a homeless person. The kingdom of God happens whenever Someone shows care to a neglected person. The kingdom of God happens whenever we overturn an uh, unjust law. The kingdom of God happens whenever we correct an injustice. The kingdom of God happens whenever we avert a war. The kingdom of God happens whenever people join in the struggle to overcome poverty. The kingdom of God happens whenever we erase ignorance. The kingdom of God happens whenever we pass on the law of faith. The kingdom of God is in the past. The kingdom of God in the life and work is in the life and work of Jesus of Nazareth. The kingdom of God is in the present. The kingdom of God is in the work of the church. The kingdom of God is in the efforts of many others to create a world of goodness and justice. The kingdom of God is in the future. The kingdom of God is reaching its completion in the age to come. The kingdom of God is a condition. The symptoms of the kingdom of God are love, justice, and peace. Jesus is king. God's kingdom is there where there is love, where there is justice, where there is peace. Jesus Christ is king. We pray together that God may free all the world to rejoice in the peace of Christ the king. We pray that God may free the world to glory in the justice of Christ the King. We pray that God will free the world to live in the love of Christ the King. We need to assess our commitment to Christ the King today. Christ Jesus is not our King if we do not listen to Him. Christ Jesus is not our King if we do not love Him. Christ Jesus is not our King if we do not serve Him. 
Christ Jesus is not our king. If we do not follow him, we belong to the kingdom of Christ only when we try to walk with Jesus. We belong to the kingdom of Christ only when we try to live our lives fully in the spirit of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We belong to the kingdom of Christ only when the spirit of the gospel penetrates every facet of our being. Christ has really to be the king of my life. Christ really has to be the king of our life. Christ must be the king of every part of my life. Christ must be the king of every part of our life. I must let Christ reign in all the parts of my life. We must allow Christ to reign in all parts of our life. We become Christ, the king's subjects, when we sincerely respond to his loving invitation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. We cultivate in our lives the gentle and humble mind of Christ. We show others that Jesus Christ is indeed our King. We show others that Christ is in charge of our lives. We need to give Jesus control over our lives. Christ must be in charge of our lives. We must give Christ sovereign powers over our bodies and thoughts. We must give Christ sovereign power over our heart and our will. In every moral decision we face, there's a choice between Christ the King or the choice of choosing Barabbas. The one who listens to live in Christ's kingdom is in the one who says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask ourselves the question, what does Jesus my King wants me to do or say in this situation? Are we praying each day that our King will give us the right words to say to the people we meet each day? Are we true ambassadors of Jesus? Does our home, our life come under the kinship of Jesus? Does the way we conduct ourselves with our friends under the kinship of Jesus? Or do we try to please ourselves rather than to please Christ our King? We need to follow Christ the King's lesson of humble service to the truth. Christ has come to serve and to be of service to others. We are called to the service of Christ our King. We are called to the service to the truth. Jesus was born. He was to bear witness to the truth. Jesus bears witness by his life. Jesus teaches us that God is his Father. Jesus is also our loving and forgiving Father. And we are all God's children, forming one body. Whatever we do for his children, we do all for Jesus. Whatever we do for our brothers and sisters, we do it for Jesus. We are called to be a people who reach out to the enemy, we are called to embrace the stranger. We are called to be a people who are called to glory in diversity. We are called to be a people who will endlessly forgive. We are called to be a people who will reach out in compassion to the poor. We are called to reach out to the marginalized sectors of our society. We are called to be a people who will support one another in prayer. We are called not to be served, but to serve. Servant leadership is the model that Christ the King has given us. For the Christian, to reign is to serve Him. To serve Him in the poor and suffering. To recognize the image of Christ in the poor and the suffering. This was said to us by the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 786. We need to obey the law of love of Christ the King. Citizens of Christ's kingdom are expected to observe only one major law, the law of love. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love me, 
you will keep my commandments. Jesus expect a higher degree of love from his followers. Love one another as I have loved you. We give Christ our King the center, central place in our lives. We promise to obey the commandment of love of our loving King. We share what we have with all his needy brothers. This is a reflection by Father Anthony Cadaville. And we thank Father Anthony Cadaville for this four points reflection of what it means to celebrate the feast of Christ the King. I invite you to say, to say this prayer to Christ the King, a Catholic prayer with soft music. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer to Christ the King. O Lord our God, you alone are the most holy King, and ruler of all nations. We pray to you, Lord, in the great expectation, of receiving from you, O Divine King, mercy, peace, justice, and all good things. Protect, O Lord our King, our families, and the land of our birth. Guard us, we pray most faithful one, protect us from our enemies, and from your just judgment. Forgive us, O Sovereign King, our sins against you. Jesus, you are a King of mercy, we have deserved your just judgment, have mercy on us Lord, and forgive us. We trust in your great mercy, O most awe-inspiring King, we bow before you and pray. May your reign, your kingdom, be recognized on earth. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Does the Catechism of the Catholic Church say on Christ the King? We quote the words of Catholic Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 786. It says, The people of God shares in the royal office of Christ. Christ exercises his kinship by drawing all men to himself through his death and resurrection. Christ, King and Lord of the universe, made himself the servant of all. Christ came not to be served, but to serve. Christ gave his life as a ransom for many. For the Christian to reign is to serve him. Christ served the poor and the suffering. The church recognized the image of Christ in the poor and the suffering. The people of God fulfills its royal dignity by a life in keeping with its vocation to serve with Christ. The sign of the cross makes kings of all those reborn in Christ. The anointing of the Holy Spirit consecrates them as priests. We Christians have the particular service of their ministry. We Christians are members of this royal race. We are sharers in Christ's priestly office. We go burn the body in obedience to Christ. As priestly people of God, we dedicate a pure conscience to the Lord. We offer the spotless offerings of devotion to the altar of the heart. These are the very words of our Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 786, on Christ the King. Beloved brothers and sisters, Jesus invites us to come closer to Him as the center of our hearts. Jesus invites us to come closer to Him as the center of our hearts. Jesus invites us to take him as the king of our hearts. Christ, our king, wants us to see him more clearly. Jesus, our king, wants us to love him more dearly. Christ, our king, invites us to follow him more nearly. Jesus invites us to be part of the proclamation 
of His kingdom, Jesus Christ, our King, invites us, repent, be converted, and believe in the good news. Jesus, our King, brings us closer to His love and sacrifice. Jesus, our King, wants us to deepen His relationship with us and for us to deepen our relationship with Him. Christ, our King, loves us and He died for us on the cross. Jesus loves us and gives Himself body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. Christ, our King, brings us to a deeper relationship with Him. Jesus, our King, is knocking at the doors of our hearts. Shall we allow Christ, our King, to enter into our hearts? Shall He be the King of our hearts? Jesus, our King, wants to be the center of our life. Jesus, our King, invites us to be the light of our life. Jesus has to be the King of our life. Jesus, our King, has to be the center of our hearts. Jesus, our King, becomes the source of our strength. Our life must be Christ-centered. Christ, our King, becomes the center of our life. Christ, our King, becomes the lamp to our feet. Christ, our King, becomes the center of our family. Christ, our King, becomes the light of our life. Jesus, our King, brings us His light. Jesus, our King, wants to enter into our life. Christ, our King, wants to enter into our family. All for Christ Jesus, our King. All glory be to Christ the King. Jesus Christ, our King, the same yesterday, today, and forever. May Jesus be today the King of our life. I end once more with this video clipping. Viva Cristo Rey! Did you know St. Jose Sanchez de Rio who, when being tortured, martyred, put to death, before dying, he was crying out, Long live Christ the King! Viva Cristo Rey!
who says Sanchez was crying out, Viva Cristo Rey! Long live Christ the King! We end with the prayers to Christ the King. Our consecration to Christ the King. Then, our litany to Christ the King. Prayers to Christ the King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ Jesus, I acknowledge you, King of the universe. All that has been created has been made for you. Make full use of your rights over me. I renew the promises I made in baptism when I renounce Satan and all his pomps and works. And I promise to live a good Christian life and to do all in my power to procure the triumph of the rights of God in your church. Divine Heart of Jesus, I offer you my efforts in order to obtain that all hearts may acknowledge your sacred royalty and that thus the kingdom of your peace may be established throughout the universe. Amen. O Lord, our God, you alone are the most holy King and ruler of all nations. We pray to you, Lord, in the great expectation of receiving from you, O Divine King, mercy, peace, justice, and all good things. Protect, O Lord, our King, our families, and the land of our birth. Guard us, we pray, most faithful one. Protect us from our enemies and from your just judgment. Forgive us, O Sovereign King, our sins against you. Jesus, you are a King of mercy. We have deserved your just judgment. Have mercy on us, Lord, and forgive us. We trust in your great mercy. O most awe-inspiring King, we bow before you and pray. May your reign, your kingdom, be recognized on earth. Amen. Holy One, enthroned in glory over all creation, you are a shepherd to the lost and the least. Teach us to see your face among the poor, feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, and visiting those who are sick or in prison, so that we may share in your eternal realm prepared from the foundation of the world, through Jesus Christ, who is coming indeed, to reign with justice, compassion, and love. Sovereign God, ruler of all creation, you sent Jesus to testify to the truth that you alone are the Lord of life. Help us to listen always to his voice so that we may proclaim his realm of justice, peace, and endless love through Christ who reigns forever. Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Savior, you pour out your power for the powerless and your salvation for the lost. Remember us in your new creation so that we may live in peace with you in the presence of the Holy One, to whom be all honor and glory through you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Consecration to Christ the King Jesus Christ, King of the universe, King of our lives and of our families, we come to you to offer you all that we are and all that we have, our thoughts, our concerns, our qualities, our desires, and our weaknesses. We wish to put them at your service in order to collaborate with you in the salvation of mankind and the extension of your kingdom in the world. Receive with love the consecration of our lives that we make to you today. Accept it as our thanksgiving in our hearts, the same zeal for the salvation of every single person that you had when you took flesh 
and when you died on the cross. Grant that we faithfully may live your command of charity which you left us as your legacy. Inflame our hearts, enlighten our minds, strengthen our resolve, and lead us always along the path of fidelity to your command. Transform us from all fear and selfishness. Strengthen our faith in the charism that you have entrusted to us, and grant us the courage to respond with absolute fidelity to your call. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lamb that was slain is worthy to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honor. To him be glory and empire forever and ever. He shall rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. All kings shall adore him, all nations shall serve him. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ the King, hear us. Christ the King, graciously hear us. Thou who didst receive crowns and tribute from the Magi, may all nations serve thee, O Lord, who didst rule by love the holy family of Nazareth, May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who as King serve thy people in the example of filial obedience. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who drawest to thy realm the fishermen to be fishers of men. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, whose kingdom is not of the spirit of this world. May all nations serve thee, O Lord who art king, not of the Jews alone, but of all creation. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who wast mocked in false purple by the little rulers. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who wast crowned with piercing thorns. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who wast nailed to thy throne on Golgotha. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who didst ransom thy people by the royal sacrifice of Calvary. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who didst purchase thy kingdom with the blood of the atonement. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who in thy resurrection wert the firstborn from the dead. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who in thy glorified body art risen triumphant. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, who art enthroned and crowned at the right hand of the Father. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, in whom are all created things, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, beneath whom are all thrones and dominations. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, beneath whom are all principalities and powers. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, by whom all things subsist. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, to whom all the nations of the earth are subject. May all nations serve thee, O Lord, through whom all things are reconciled unto thy Father. May all nations serve thee, O Lord. His power shall be an everlasting power, and his kingdom a kingdom that shall not be destroyed. That the peoples of this world may know themselves subject to thee, 
we beseech thee, hear us, that they may put off their vain glory. We beseech thee, hear us, that they may bow their heads before thee. We beseech thee, hear us, that they may know thy reign is eternal. We beseech thee, hear us, that they may submit to thy just and gentle rule. We beseech thee, hear us, that they may recognize thy vicar on earth. We beseech thee, hear us, that they may freely accept his rule for thy sake. We beseech thee, hear us, that they may know that thy church, being thee thyself, cannot die as nations die. We beseech thee, hear us, that the Gentiles may be restored to mercy. We beseech thee, hear us, that to Christ the King all things may be restored. We beseech thee, hear us, that in the Prince of Peace true peace may by all be found. We beseech thee, hear us, Lamb of God who takest away the sins of the world, spare us, O Christ our King. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, hear us, O Christ our King. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. His power shall be an everlasting power, which shall not be taken away, and his kingdom shall not decay. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, who in thy beloved Son, King of the whole world, has will to restore all things anew, grant in thy mercy that all the families of nations rent asunder by the wound of sin may be subjected to his most gentle rule, who with thee liveth and reigneth in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, world without end. Amen. All is past. 